Chapter 45 in Timby, Caring for Clients with Disorders of the Upper GI Tract. Today we're going to discuss assessment findings and treatment of eating disorders, esophageal disorders and gastric disorders. Two, describe the nursing management of a client with an NG or GI tube or gastrostomy. Three, identify strategies for relieving upper GI discomfort. And four, discuss the nursing management of clients undergoing gastric surgery. Anorexia is defined as a lack of appetite. It can cause malnutrition if it's a chronic state. Um, it takes place in the appetite center as far as the um, nausea. And remember that um, the liver can break down glycogen to glucose when there are times of the starvation um, to provide sugar for the body. Signs and symptoms include um, the absence of hunger and nausea. Um, sometimes vomiting. Other signs would be uh, dehydration uh, seen in poor skin turgor and lack of uh, moisture in the uh, mouth. So you're going to see a dry tongue, you're going to have dry eyes, um, and possibly dry skin. Diagnostic findings is going to include um, hypovitaminosis, which is a vitamin B12 deficiency. And you're going to find your RBCs too large. When you look at your lab values, you're going to see a low albumin, electrolytes that are abnormal, protein levels, again, the albumin being low, and possibly cardiac dysrhythmias. You would see a dysrhythmia in your patient um, evidenced by an elevated U wave, which shows or displays um, potassium deficiency. Is the following true or false? Anorexia is a lack of appetite and can result in malnutrition. To combat nausea, you want to offer small meals, small sips of fluids, and to eat slowly. Um, you want to try dry, salty foods, avoid spice and fats, and cold foods, prefer preferably to hot. If they're vomiting, you want to offer clear fluids in small amounts. Um, let's try to use Gatorade. Uh, it does have some electrolytes and sugar in it. If their urine is less than 500 cc's a day, you want to inform the provider or if their electrolytes are abnormal. Again, you want to weigh them daily and assess the skin turgor and mucous membranes. As far as evaluation goes, ideally you want to have 2,500 cc's in of fluids and 2,600 out. You want the weight to be maintained or regained and you want the electrolyte lab values to return to normal. This is disorders that affect eating and cancer of the oral cavity. Um, this affects the oral cavity, lips, tongues, and pharynx. It causes our smoking, alcohol, HPV, which is the herpes virus, and UV light. Signs and symptoms include dysphagia, which is difficulty to chew. Asymptomatic, um, it could be asymptomatic. It could also include pain or soreness, bleeding, or leukoplakia, which is white patchiness. Patient could also have a red patch in the mouth that doesn't heal. Prevention includes um, vaccination with HPV. This is mainly a surgical intervention. Um, you want to initially get the cancer out. If it has already spread, it could um, be surgically difficult and cause disfiguration of the face and neck. Your main focus is to maintain the airway you may have a tracheostomy, um, and you should have a tray by the bedside just in case. You should be giving tube feedings, adequate fluid and, and food intake, and be supportive of communication since a lot of people cannot speak after this surgery. Um, you may want to bring in a speech pathologist 
Otherwise, you want to be using whiteboards um, and or some other way to communicate with the patient. You should also have a section set up next to the bed post-operatively um, if needed. And again, your focus is the airway. Esophageal disorders, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux, um, is gastric contents regurgitating. The path at fizz and etiology are that the lower esophageal sphincter is insufficient, meaning it's not closing. Signs and symptoms including epigastric pain, burning, and regurgitation. For diagnostic findings, you want to use a barium swallow, upper endoscopy with biopsy, capsule. The capsule uh, measurement is uh, from the lower esophageal sphincter, and it's measuring the pH and the frequency of reflux. The barium swallow shows strictures or banding and inflammation. And also a bronchoscopy is done to um, assess the respiratory uh, system airway for um, aspiration. Medications include antacids, proton pump inhibitors, antihistamines, um, which all decrease acid production, um, making sure that the patient stays upright for uh, at least an hour after eating, and also that the head of the bed is raised at night to prevent uh, regurgitation and aspiration. Again, airway is the priority. Treatment for GERD includes uh, surgical fundoplication, which is when the uh, lower esoph esophageal sphincter is wrapped around the fundus, the gastric fundus, and sutured into place. Also, uh, another method is dilation of if the patient has strictures in the esophagus. And the stressa uh, system is when the electrodes are used to create tiny lesions on the lower esophageal sphincter, and these lesions, as they heal, tighten, which increases muscle, muscle mass and prevents reflux. Is the following statement true or false? Gastroesophageal reflux disease is where gastric contents regurgitate. And this is true. Esophageal diverticulum is um, when there is a pouching that occurs at the junction of the pharynx and the esophagus or in the middle or lower part of the esophagus. This could be due to congenital or acquired esophageal wall thickness um, weakness. So with this pouching, you're going to have signs and symptoms of foul breath, difficulty swallowing, and possible pus. Basically what's happened is food um, gets packed into this pouch and um, decomposes, which causes the um, ulcerations and the um, foul smell and difficulty swelling because it'll be enlarged. It is diagnosed with a barium swallow and an esophagoscopy. Medical and surgical treatment includes a diet therapy of bland, soft, semi-soft liquid foods and or surgical excision of the diverticulum, which is the pouch. Hiatal hernia. This is when there's a protrusion of part of the stomach into the lower portion of the thorax. There are two kinds of hiatal hernias, axial or sliding, and the other is the paraesophageal. What is this going to cause? A lot of heartburn, belching, or pain after eating. Your diagnostics are going to include a barium swallow and esophagoscopy. For treatment, uh, as far as surgical, you can stretch the narrowed esophagus, and also you can surgically restore the stomach to its proper place and position with the paraesophageal hernia.
the esophageal cancer is um, when cancer, uh, squamous cell cancer lines the um, cells of the esophagus. This is usually due to alcohol abuse and smoking, and the two together make your risk a lot higher for this. Signs and symptoms, um, you can have a decrease in swallowing ability, also weight loss and respiratory distress as the tumor becomes larger. Another type of cancer, the adenocarcinoma, is in the glandular tissue in the lower part of the esophagus. Diagnostic findings, again, we're going to use barium swallow, a biopsy, an EGD, a bronchoscopy if the, um, to see if the cancer cells have gone into the respiratory tract, um, an endoscopic ultrasound, and a mediastinoscopy. And the mediastinoscopy is to see if the cancer has um, gone into the mediastinum and the lymph nodes surrounding it. Medical and surgical management include uh, surgery, as you would think, to remove the cancer cells, and also there is palliative measures. Palliative measures includes laser surgery um, to remove the uh, strictures of the or the blockage with the cells. Also, um, they can place stents in to the obstructed areas to allow for movement through the esophagus. Also radiation, chemo, again, laser and phototherapy. The phototherapy actually removes the cancer cells to improve swallowing. Peptic ulcer disease um, can be, uh, it's like a gastritis, an inflammation that can occur in the stomach, lower end of the esophagus and also, which it usually occurs there, and also the duodenum. Um, basically, this is in the tissue that's in contact with the hydrochloric acid. The causes are H. pylori. Um, also, there could be a family history of this and other risk factors that include mucosal injury. Again, this causes chronic gastric inflammation. Assessment findings include uh, pain in the abdomen and back, usually one to two hours after eating. Also, blood in vomit and blood in stool. Diagnostic findings include an upper GI and EGD. Um, also, for labs, you'll see a low hemoglobin and a low RBC. For medical care, you're going to be on caraphate. Um, also, antibiotics, possibly due to the H. pylori and H. receptor uh, agonists. Surgical management includes eradication therapy, which is removal of the stomach, and uh, pain management. On page uh, 792 in your book in Timby, table 45.3 shows you surgical procedures for pelvic, excuse me, for peptic ulcer disease. Uh, also as part of this, if they do remove your stomach, is a thing called dumping syndrome, and this is when um, a person starts taking solid foods after surgery. It causes palpitations, weakness, hypotension, dizziness, and diarrhea. And um, and if there's too much carbohydrates that make their way into the jejunum, this stimulates the pancreas to secrete insulin, which causes hypoglycemia. Stomach cancer, mostly found in Japanese, African Americans, and Latinos. This can be due to stomach cancer, can be due to heredity, chronic inflammation an absence of hydrochloric uh, acid, and also chronic ingestion of toxins. Signs and symptoms include, early signs includes uh, occult blood, in other words, blood in the stool, and diagnostic findings include a barium swallow, a CT scan, a tissue biopsy, gastric analysis, and an ultrasound. Surgery is usually the first choice, um, total or subtotal gastrectomy. 
and um, chemo, radiation, palliative radiation. And dr the chemo drugs include adromycin, a drug called Glevic, Sutent, and Imatinib. You're going to have to look in your book for these. Pretty hard to pronounce. And that's page 794. Gastrostomy tubes. They provide nutrition, a place to give medicine safely other than oral route. Um, also provide gastric decompression or compression. Lavage in case someone has overdosed. Um, diagnostics. Uh, is a reason for a gastrostomy tube and treatment for, uh, for certain things. The placement is either through orogastric or nasogastric. Surgical uh, placement would be a gastrostomy, otherwise known as a peg tube, G tube, or jejunostomy, depending on where it is. Usually, this is for long term tube feedings. Which electrolyte imbalance is common with someone who has vomited? Low sodium, high sodium, low calcium, or high calcium? You are correct. It is low sodium and usually low chloride as well. Again, remember when the volume is down because they vomited, then your concentration, or excuse me, your sodium and chloride will be down because water, when you lose water or fluids, your sodium and chloride go out as well.